if freedom failed. We'd like to take you on a visit to a town that doesn't exist. A town we call Springfield, USA. We'd like to show you how things would be in any American town if communism took over. This is the story of a Boy Scout. The story of what happens to youth organizations under a communist regime. The title of the story is The Pledge. <laughs> Looking, Paul. Now look at this sign. My atom bomb special. Yahoo! Oh. <laughs> you see me? Do you call that a dive? Sure. Can you do it? Hands behind my back. Yeah? Well, let me see you. Nah, I'm gonna stay out for a while. Oh, come on in, Jean. The high school guys will be coming pretty soon. In a minute. Well, I'm going down the other end. Okay. Hiya, Jean. Oh, hi, Lester. Won another Boy Scout merit badge, didn't you? Uh-huh. For first date. He yeah, how'd you know? Saw it in the paper. Congratulations. Gee, thanks. I'm gonna start working on my civics badge next. You must be a pretty good scout. Well, I'm the leader of my patrol. You know something, Gene? What? We're looking for kids like you. What do you mean? Bunch of us at Springfield High are starting a new club. The Pioneers. Yeah? It's, well, it's a club for fellows and girls. You want to go to the university someday, don't you? Well, sure I do. Okay. The Pioneers will help you get there if you're a loyal member. Yeah? And if you get to know some of the fellows higher up, get on the good side of them, you're a cinch to get into the university. Gosh, how can they do that? Oh, there are ways. Lots of kids are joining up. You don't want to be left out, do you? Heck no. Well, I'll talk to my dad and see what he says. You tell him about the other kids, and he'll let you join. Hey, Gene, come on in. Come on, just a second. Is that a friend of yours? Yeah, his name's Paul Gerard. Maybe he'll join the Pioneers with you. Yeah, maybe he will. I'll ask him. Swell. I'll leave an application in the locker room for you. See you at the meeting tonight at the hall. Yeah, okay, Lester. Hey, Gene. Huh? Keep your pants on. I'm coming. <laughs> Well, son, how'd it go today? Okay. Paul and me went swimming over at the high school for a while. Have fun? Yeah. Oh, I saw Lester Parker over there. Parker? Uh-huh. He said he read all about me in the paper. What did he want? He asked me to join a club the fellows in Springfield hire starting. Oh, what kind of a club? Oh, I don't know. But it's got a keen name. The Pioneers. Uh, Gene, He gave I... me an application for you to sign. I got to get your permission, Dad. I'm not so sure I want you to join the club, Gene. Huh? But why? The Parkers are all loyal members of the Communist Party. Well, all you have to do is sign the application. Gene, don't you understand? I don't want you to join the Pioneers. Won't you let me join the Boy Scouts? Well, that's different. Why? Because everything the Boy Scouts stand for is different. Well, that's that for another day. Oh, my. What serious faces? What's going on? Well, Dad won't let me join the Pioneers. What's that? Something to do with your Boy Scouts? Well, why can't he join, Ben? Well, it doesn't have anything to do with the Boy Scouts, Marion. No? It's a new youth movement starting up in Springfield, a communist youth movement. Oh, you don't think the communists are trying to, to organize children or anything like that? Why not? They organized oh, ben... everything else, our industries, our agriculture. They've taken over the government. But to think they'd organize the children is ridiculous, dear. Well, can you tell me what harm a bunch of 12- and 13-year-olds could do? They'll think up some way for the kids to work for the party. Darling, I know how disturbed you've been since they took over. Everybody has. But as long as we can't fight it, why shouldn't we accept it? You joined the party. Yes, yeah, so you and Jean could go on living. And we are. Maybe not as well as we used to, and maybe we don't have as much freedom as we used to, but we have food and clothes. And you have a job. Yes, yes, I still have a job. So, as long as you're already a member of the party, I can't see any harm in letting Jean join this, this, uh, whatever it is they call it. Pioneers, oh, Mom. Yes. They go camping and hiking, and they even have dances. There, there's nothing wrong in that, is there? Well, it sounds all right, but, oh, I don't know. You've seen how they do things, Marion. Why should this be different? 
Well, darling, there's one way to find out. Let Jean give it a try. Then if we decide it's not the right kind of organization for him to be in, why, he can drop out. Yeah. I, I have an idea he will anyhow, what with his scout activities and his school, but... Well, dear, it's up to you. You're the one to sign the application. Oh, please, Dad. Can't talk you out of it, can I? Well, I don't want to be the only one who isn't a pioneer. Okay, I'll sign it. You ten kids are the first pioneer Lincoln Springfield. You and four other links will take your orders from me. I will be your brigade leader. Your first order is to learn the pioneer law and remember it. Here it is. The pioneer is true to the cause of the working class and to the laws of Lenin. The pioneer is the younger brother and helper of the Communist Party. He is a comrade to the workers' children of the world. You will all learn it before the next meeting. Now you'll rise and repeat the pledge after me. I, a young pioneer of Soviet America. I, a young pioneer of Soviet America. In the presence of my comrades. In the presence of my comrades. Pledge that I will firmly defend the cause of Lenin and Stalin. Pledge that I will firmly defend the cause of Lenin and Stalin. The victory of communism. The victory of communism. I pledge to live and study in such a manner. I pledge to live and study in such a manner. As to become a worthy citizen of my country as to become a worthy citizen of my country. For the struggle for the cause of Lenin-Stalin, be ready. Always be ready. Dad, come on in. I was just laying here and looking at the stars. Sure are bright, aren't they? Yeah. See that one up there? The one that looks like it's blinking? That's the North Star. I know. In the old sailing days, the captains steered their ships by watching the North Star. They did? As long as they kept their eyes on it, they knew they'd never lose their way. Gee, where'd you learn that? Oh, we read it somewhere. Uh, Jean. I'll bet you know all about the stars. Jean. Mm hmm. How was that meeting tonight? Oh, Keen. Lester told us all about the pioneers and how we were going to be comrades with all the other kids. And we had to take a pledge that we'd become worthy citizens of our country. I see. Hey, you know something funny, Dad? Hmm? The motto of the pioneers is the same one the knights used to have in the old days always be ready. Just like they told us in the Boy Scouts. Isn't that funny? Yes, it is. You don't sound like you think it's funny. Guess I was thinking about something else. What, Dad? Do you remember right after you joined the Boy Scouts, you learned the oath of the Athenian young man? Uh-huh. Do you still know it? Sure, I think so. Say it for me. Now? What for? I just want to hear you say it. Okay. We will never bring disgrace on this, our city by any act of dishonesty or cowardice. We will fight for the ideals and sacred things of the city, both alone and with many. We will revere and obey the city's laws and will do our best to incite a like reverence and respect in those above us who are prone to annul them or set them at naught. We will strive increasingly to quicken the public sense of civic duty. Thus, in all these ways, we will transmit this city, not only not less, but greater, better, and more beautiful than it was transmitted to us. How's that? That's fine, son. Why did you want to hear me say it? I want to be sure you still remember it. And I don't want you ever to forget it. All right, Dad. You promise? Scout's honor. Hmm. Now you better go to sleep. Good night, son. Oh, Dad, you shouldn't kiss me. Why not? You're my son, aren't you? Good night, Jane. Night, Dad. Come on, Jean. Come on. 
Okay, boys, that's a half. Say, that was a nice run, Eugene. You better sit down and take it easy. Okay. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Hannah. There's Paul Gerard. Hey, Paul, wait a sec. Eugene, second half in five minutes. I'll be right back, Mr. Hannah. Hi, Paul. Hi. Hey, what's your big hurry? What do you Where have you been the last couple of weeks? What do you mean? Well, I've been around. How come you never come over anymore? Well, I had a lot of things to do around the house. Well, where were you last Saturday? I wanted you to go to the Pioneer meeting with me. I was busy. And besides, I told you before I can't go. Oh, golly, Paul, I sure wish you'd change your mind about joining. Hey, why don't you talk to your dad again? I did. What'd he say? What you suppose he said. No, like he always does. Even when I told him everybody I know was joining, he said no. He says he'd rather see me be playing all by myself than joining the Pioneers with all the other kids. He says the Pioneers are all a bunch of communists. And fellas like Lester Parker are training the other kids to forget they're Americans and be a red nose like he is. He also says there's some of us who haven't forgot this used to be a free country. Did your father really say all that? Yeah. Gee. Oh, gee, Paul, don't get sore. Well, I will if I want to. Here comes that Lester Parker. Why don't you go play with him? Hey, wait a minute. Don't go away, man. Hey, Paul. Oh, heck, why do you have to get so sore? Just because his father won't let him join. Hi, Eugene. Oh, hi, Lester. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Paul's mad at me, that's all. I saw him talking to you. What's he mad about? Oh, just because his father won't let him be a pioneer. He gets sore. Doesn't have to get sore at me, does he? I didn't do nothing. Why won't his father let him join? Well, I don't know. He says the pioneers are a bunch of red noses or something. They forgot this used to be a free country. Oh? Where does his father work? He's foreman of the Springfield Dion Tool Works. He's our scoutmaster, too. He is, huh? Yeah. What you want to know for? Oh, nothing special. Just wondered. <laughs> Do Ben? Thanks. Oh, what'd you do at school today, Jean? Oh, we played football. Hmm. Did Paul Gerard play with you? Paul. Huh. I tried to get him to join the pioneers with me, but he wouldn't do it. Oh. Just because his father says they're a bunch of red noses. What does he know about it anyhow? Maybe that explains something. What's that been? Frank Gerard was fired today. Fired? Why? What do you mean, why? As long as Commissar Chase is plant manager, he doesn't give reasons for firing anybody. But Frank was foreman. What difference does that make? Well, didn't Commissar Chase give any reason at all? No, only the usual. It had been brought to his attention that Frank had expressed thoughts contrary to those of the party. Oh, that's terrible. Frank Gerard, of all people. Who reported him? Oh, you never find out things like that. Well, do you think it's someone at the plant? I doubt it. Frank has enough sense not to say anything when he's surrounded by a bunch of communist informers. Well, then, then who could... Must have been someone else, a friend of Frank, someone he trusts. Oh. Or maybe Paul heard him say something against the communists and innocently told it to someone else who has a communist connection. Mm -hmm. Oh, Gene, what's the matter with you? Nothing. Mom. Want to break that plate? No, it, it just slipped. The knife, I mean. <laughs> oh, dear. Who could that be right in the middle of dinner? Jean, go see what I have. Okay, Dad. Mm. Sure. I don't know why people have to ring your bell just when a person's eating. You know, I never saw it to fail. What, what's wrong with Jean? Wrong? See the way he jumped up from the table? Ordinarily, we have to talk to him two or three times before he leaves. Well, the, the, the doorbell rang. Yes, I know that. I wonder who it is. Jean, who is it? Mrs. Gerard. Phyllis, I wonder what she wants. Ben, you seen Frank? Phyllis. You seen Frank, Ben? No. Why? What's wrong? I don't know. He said he was going down to talk to Commissar Chase, trying to get his job back. Should have come home hours ago. Called everywhere, but no one's seen him. Where do you suppose he is? Now, take it easy, Phyllis. He's probably detained somewhere, that's all. Well, then why didn't he call me? Always has before when he was going to be late. I'm sure you know where he was, Ben. I'm sorry, Phyllis. I, I know something's happened. I just know. No, no, he's all right, Phyllis. 
Now, I've told him over and over again not to say anything about the communists. I told him someone would report him if he did. He wouldn't listen to me. He hates them so. Look, dear, come here. Sit here. Now, now let me get you a cup of coffee. He only joined the party because there was no other way out. He never really believed. Oh, no. No, no, dear, please. Then can't you go out and see if you can find him? Where would I look? Phyllis said, Joe. Jean, answer the phone. Hello? Oh, hi, Paul. What are you crying about? No, no, no. no. Yeah, she's here. In just a sec. It's Paul, Mrs. Gerard. He's crying. Let me talk to him. Paul? What is it? Frank's dead. Oh, no. They found him in his office. Gun in his hand. Frank's dead. Marion, you better go with her. Yes, sir. Come on, Phyllis. I'll take you home. Frank's dead, Marion? Yes, dear. Frank's dead, Marion. He's dead. No, no, don't think about it, dear. Don't even talk about it. I'll see you later, Dad. Jane. I have some homework. Jane. Yes, Dad? Sit down. But, Dad, I... I want to talk to you. Yes, sir. Mr. Gerard is dead, Jean. Yes, sir. I don't know whether he killed himself or someone else did it, but he's dead. Do you know why? No. Because somebody talked to the wrong person. Now, do you know anyone who could have done that? No, Dad. Think, Jean, are you sure? I'm sure. A scout is trustworthy, Jean. I didn't lie to you, Dad. I, I don't know anything about why Mr. Gerard's dead. I, I don't. You've always told the truth, son. I'm telling you the truth now. I don't know anything about it. All right, all right, Jean. You don't know anything about it. And even if you did, it's too late now. <laughs> are listening to The Pledge, a story of the way things could be if communism took over, a picture of what life would be like under a communist regime in an ordinary American town, a town we call Springfield, USA. So it is, my friends, that we have gathered here to pay our final respects to Frank Edward Gerard, who has left behind him a myriad of friends. Frank Gerard was a man of unblemished character. He was a good provider. He was a loving husband, a kind and understanding father. He never faltered in his duty to his family, his friends, himself. Those of us who knew him personally suffer a great loss with his passing. And it is with sorrowful hearts that we are now gathered to return the earthly remains of Frank Gerard whence they came. Let us pray. So the funeral's over, and Frank's gone. Yes. Poor Phyllis. And Paul, don't forget Paul. Pretty tough on him, too. Don't you think so, Jean? Yeah. How could they do it to a man like Frank? He never hurt anyone in his whole life. Why would they kill him? 
They said it was suicide. Suicide? Oh, Ben, you know better than that. Frank had never commit suicide, no matter what happened. He always fought for the things he believed in. That's probably why they killed him. How far are they going, Ben? They have our government, our industries now. What do they want? Our souls? Oh, those greedy vultures. Now take it easy, Marion. Talk like that can get you into trouble. Oh, I suppose it could. Thank God only my husband and son hear me. That's what I mean. What? You're alone with your husband and your son. You certainly wouldn't inform on me, would you? No, I wouldn't. But you forget that Jean is a member in good standing of the pioneers. What, Ben, how can you think of such a thing? Oh, I don't say he'd ever do it deliberately. I don't think he could. But they'd find some way to make him turn informer. I wouldn't do it ever. Mom, you know I would. Oh, of course I do. And I didn't tell him, Mr. Gerard. Honest, I did. Oh, I know, darling, I know. Paul thinks I did. He won't talk to me anymore. And Dad thinks I did, too. Ben, could you accuse your, your own son of such a terrible thing? I'm not accusing him of anything, Marion. It's, it's the communists. I wouldn't trust any one of them as far as I could throw an elephant. I know how those pioneers work, and if Jean knew something they wanted to know, you can be darn sure they'd find it out somehow. I didn't tell. Oh, look, Jean. Jean, I warned you, I begged you not to join the pioneers, but you wanted to do what the other kids did. There was no way I could stop you. Sure, I could have chained you to your bed or locked you in the cellar, but it wouldn't have done any good. Your mother insisted that I let you get it out of your system. Oh, but I didn't know that. Nothing Dad. sacred to them, son. They'll praise you, make you think you're a wonderful guy until you're not only betraying your friends' families, but your own. Oh, now, Ben. I couldn't do anything like that. I couldn't. My scout pledge. You took a pledge when you joined the Pioneers, too. Which one are you going to be true to, Jean? Which one means more to you? I don't know. Well, you don't have much time to decide, Jean. It has to be one or the other. You have to make a decision now. I don't know. I don't know. Ben, Ben, wait. You're, you're confusing me, child. Jean, when's the next Pioneer meeting? Tonight. All right, go to it. And be a man. Stand up and tell him you're quitting. Remember, a scout has the courage to face danger in spite of fear. This is your chance to prove yourself. Oh, dear, I don't think he should go out tonight. There's a storm coming up. This is a lot more important than a storm, Marion. It's Gene's whole future. Tonight he'll know in which direction he's going. <laughs> Commendation from the Central Committee goes to pioneer Elsa Hudson, who is responsible for exposing anti-Soviet American action in her father's mill. I have requested that pioneer Hudson be advanced to the next group. I knew Elsa. That takes care of the old business. Now for the new business. Comrade Parker. Yes, Comrade Morrison. I, I want to ask you a question. Go ahead. I want to know why you made me tell you about Mr. Gerard. No special reason. Did you know he... he's dead? Well, sure I do. So what? He's dead because I told on him. He's dead because he knew he was an enemy of the people, and he committed suicide. He didn't commit suicide. Somebody killed him and made it look like he committed suicide. And he wasn't an enemy of the people. He was a good man. Why, why a scoutmaster couldn't be anybody's enemy. Yeah? What's so wonderful about being a scout? Everything is. Scouts are loyal and kind and trustworthy. No. Scouts don't snitch on people. And they're worthy citizens of their country. Only loyal pioneers are worthy citizens of their country. Scouts wouldn't bring disgrace on their city by being dishonest or a coward. Forget about the Boy Scouts. Your duty is to defend the victory of communism. My duty is to God and my country. There isn't any God. God's a, a fairy tale. Just something that people dreamed up to explain something they didn't understand. There is a God! You can't believe in middle-class junk like that and still be a loyal pioneer. Then I don't want to be a pioneer anymore. All right, then get out. You're expelled from the pioneers right now. And the rest of you aren't to have anything to do with him or talk to him. Ever. Well, I don't care. The pioneers are bad and everything you tell us is bad. Just like my father said. I should have listened to him when he tried to tell me. 
He told me the communists aren't any good. He told me nothing's sacred to them and that they're making a bunch of stool pigeons out of us kids. He knew I told him, Mr. Gerard. And you made me lie to my father. You made me break my scout pledge. But I'm not gonna break it anymore. I'm gonna be a good scout from now on. Yeah? Well, there isn't any more Boy Scouts. You're a liar. We got a report from the Central Committee this morning. The Boy Scouts have been declared fascist and will not be recognized by the party. I don't believe you. It isn't true. It is true. So now you aren't either a pioneer or a Boy Scout. You're nothing. I'm going home. I'm going to tell my father what you said. Go ahead. Go home and tell him you'll be reported as an enemy of the people. No. I want to go home. I want to go home. Everything you told me is a lie. I know it is. I won't listen to you anymore. The scouts haven't been outlawed. I know they haven't. They'll never be outlawed. You made me tell my father. He said you would. But I didn't want to. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Now they'll kill him, too. I want my father. Gene. Gene, wait. I want my father. Gene. Gene. Gene, it's Dad. What's wrong? Oh, Dad. They threw me out of the club. That's all right, son. Lester said there wasn't any more Boy Scouts. He said there wasn't any God. Come on, son. We're going home. And he made me tell on you, Dad. I didn't want to. But he made me do it. And now they'll kill you, just like they did Mr. Gerard. No, son, I don't think they'll kill me. But, but what'll they do, Dad? What'll they do? I'm not worried about what they'll do to me. But what's going to become of you? It's right. What's going to become of me? You have just heard a story of what happened to a boy scout who was forced to betray everything in which he believed. You have just heard what happens to any youth organization when communism takes over. You think this could not happen? It did happen in Russia. It did happen to the writer Nina Alexeeva when the pioneer movement was established and the Russian children were taught to believe that religion is the enemy of the people. It did happen in Hungary when Lieutenant General Sviridov, communist commander, purged several youth groups and ordered the suppression of the Boy Scouts. You have been listening to If Freedom Failed, starring Jeffrey Silver as Gene Morrison in The Pledge. Whitfield Connor was Ben, and Ann Morrison was Marion. Others in the cast were Jimmy Ogg, Joel Nestler, Peggy Weber, Joel Davis, Richard Monahan, Joe Cranston, Joe Granby, and Lamont Johnson. Music was composed by John Hicks, with musical direction by Michelle Perrier. The pledge was written for If Freedom Failed by Milt Kahn, produced and directed by Robert M. Young. Sergeant Lloyd Iyer speaking. This program has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.